uh, in the 1920s, 1930s, and 1940s, obviously during the Depression era, uh, when he was a young man, he had the difficulty finding work. This is a poem uh, about that experience, uh, and also it's about growing up with his brother. But he wrote it in the early 1990s, when he was about 60, so his brother would have been uh, gone for a long time by then. He would have come to some uh, knowledge concerning what work is that perhaps didn't happen with Young. That's the name of the poem and the, the book that it's from, though, is What Work Is. We stand in the rain in a long line waiting at Ford Highland Park for work. You know what work is. If you're old enough to read this, you know what work is, although you may not do it. Forget you. This is about waiting. Shifting from one foot to another, feeling the light rain falling like mist into your hair, blurring your vision, until you think you see your own brother ahead of you, maybe ten places. You rub your glasses with your fingers, and of course it's someone else's brother, narrower across the shoulder than yours, but with the same sad slouch, the grin that does not hide the stubbornness, the sad refusal to give in to rain, the hours wasted waiting, to the knowledge that somewhere ahead, a man is waiting who will say, no, we're not hiring today, for any reason he wants. You love your brother. Now suddenly, you can hardly stand the love flooding you for your brother, who's not beside you, or behind you, or ahead, because he's home trying to sleep off a miserable night shift at Cadillac so he can get up before noon to study his German. Works eight hours a night so he can sing Wagner, the opera you hate most, the worst music ever invented. Well, how long has it been since you told him you loved him, held his wide shoulders, opened your eyes wide and said those words, maybe kissed his cheek? You've never done something so simple, so obvious. Not because you're too young or too dumb. Not because you're jealous or even mean or incapable of crying in the presence of another man. No, just because you don't know what work is. <laughs> Recite a bit of Blake, and it's kind of fun to think about him in a, in a different way than I usually do. So, this is from The Marriage of Heaven and Hell, one of his illuminated books, um, which has pictures. So, you're going to have to make the pictures in your mind as I'm doing this. But just one bit of a word of how to listen to this, because Blake is weird. And one thing to listen for when you're listening to this is just to be thinking about that he's rewriting. I mean, in his mind, he's writing the Bible and working his way through a number of books of the Bible, from Genesis, certainly, to the book of Proverbs, all the way to Revelation. And, but through, throughout the whole piece, echoes co commandments. So listen for commandments of various kinds. But it's not the Ten Commandments he's after. I mean, what he's after is the type of commandment that shows up in Genesis where God says, let there be light, and then there's light. It's that kind of thing that he's playing on. <clears throat> Rintra roars and shakes his fires into burdened air. Hungry clouds swag upon the deep. Once meek and in a perilous path, the just man kept his course along the veil of death. Roses are planted where thorns grow, and on the barren heath sing the honeybees. Then the perilous path was planted, 
and a river and a spring on every cliff and tomb, and on the bleached bones red clay brought forth. Till the villain left the paths of ease to walk in perilous paths and drive the just man into barren climes. Now the sneaking serpent walks in mild humility and the just man rages in the wilds where lions roam. Ridden trod roars and shakes his fires in the burdened air. Hungry clouds sway. As a new heaven has begun, and it is 33 years since its advent, the eternal hell revives. And lo, Swedenborg is the angel sitting at the tomb, and his writings are the linen cloths folded up. Now is the dominion of Edom and the return of Adam into paradise. See Isaiah 34 and 35 chapters. Without contraries is no progression. Attraction and repulsion, reason and energy, love and hate are necessary to human existence. From these contraries spring what the religious call good and evil. Good is the passive that obeys energy. Evil is the active springing from Good is heaven, reason is hell. A memorable fancy. As I was walking among the fires of hell, delighting in the enjoyments of genius, which to angels looked like torment and insanity, I collected some of their proverbs, thinking that as the sayings used in a nation mark its character, so the proverbs of hell show the nature of infernal wisdom better than any description of buildings or gardens. When I came home on the abyss of the five senses, where a flat-sided steep frowns over the present world, I saw a mighty devil, folded in black clouds, hovering on the sides of the rocks. With corroding fires, he wrote the following sentence, now perceived by the minds of men and read by them on earth, how do you know but every bird that cuts the airy way is an immense world of delight closed by your senses five? The Proverbs of Hell. In seed time learn, in harvest teach, in winter enjoy. Drive your cart and your plow over the bones of the dead. The road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. Prudence is a rich, ugly old maid courted by incapacity. He who desires but acts not breeds pestilence. The cut worm forgives the plow. Dip him in the river who loves water. <laughs> the fool sees not the same tree that a wise man sees. Eternity is in love with the productions of time. The busy bee has no time for sorrow. If the fool would persist in his folly, he would become one. Prisons are built with stones of law, brothels with the bricks of religion. How you know what is enough unless you know what is more than enough? Enough or too much? And from the end of the poem is his song of liberty. Let the priests of the raven on no more in deadly black with hoarse note, curse the sons of joy, nor their accepted brethren, whom tyrant he calls free. Lay the bound or build the roof, nor pale religious lechery call that for 
virginity that desires but acts not. For everything that lives is holy. Such is my reality, a sad irrationality. When heart, what is this I see? Another square root of three. As quietly co-waltzing by, together now we multiply. To form a number we prefer, rejoicing as an integer. With the wave of magic wands, we break free of our mortal bonds. My square root sign has come and leave. My love for you has been renewed. Thank you. <laughs> Future was created, gazing at the past, and continues to hold promise. The greater 
The greater focus of other planets, like Mars, move the frontier upward. Our bean counting ways paid off. The idea of other Earths has haunted the mind for centuries. Ha <laughs> ha, as if. The passive chortle ghosted by the glimmer of dream and prophecy like golden stream. We have counted flowers in a breeze, straw on a draw, fish in the deep, sheep on the cliff, bows and blades, the moon at noon, fruit on the tree, wolves and weeds. To say there should be shock in our math leads to no mystery for me. Turning a scope to space is as natural as can be. Perfectly suited, the observer is safe and free. The sky is large and full of secrets, something we absolutely detest in not solving. We count, gather, and measure in our drive to discover what we find whispered by our stellar lover is that she is our mother. Sorting and defining is the drama of another. By seeing into the universe past and playing with the unseen, we uncover the symmetry we are comfortable with. Not only is the frontier a promise of range we desperately want to know, is this all there is? After our moonshot, we got a clear view of what terraforming old soul would cost. A species, if if this is our only ecosystem, worries about mistakes, famine, and greed. The discovery of so immense a number of galaxies glazed our mind. It was the flash of game in the trees. Having our particle physics begin to meld with astrophysics, in the interim we build weapons of lore and fear to use them, turned the whale by the snout. The warm current brought with it the scent of a new ocean. This news may not have brought the reaction I ought to have, but my impression is that it confirmed our inner suspicions and chasms. An intensely minuscule, in an intensely minuscule amount of time, the tangled tumble of elemental tables converged with the wherewithal of witnessing interstellar weather. Our solar system, a singular soleil, is not alone in the circumnavigation of our stellar cluster. Brilliant blossoms bubble, bubble from our beams below burns. Banal becomes Jupiter of a thousand stars, lord of the ancient heavens, Jovian worlds we call them, and bid them welcome. Our past is our future, and we doodlebug from the eye atop the mountain. We yearn to be nurtured by a nature that we both seek to escape and embrace. Who are we? Wayfarers and dawn treaders. We stand on our shores with hymns of grace and faces grim, paddles ready for each limb. Between us, the, the sea dog named, named Jim. Our shot of hadron gun, we probe the quantum quark soup, dim sum, cosmic, cosmic streams, theories of everything. And at the other end, a dim, foreign sun. To lose our place as special, some will bemoan. When we find it common, this old world we call home. For most others, we want another place to build our throne. Much, much too far to foam. On that day, many, well, many may call it a miracle, a mark of the sublime, evidence of intelligent design. For others that recall a past eternal, the ember we lit, the torch to candle to flame. It is just another astrological sign arrived right on time. But who am I to say? I am no ancient Greek or Babylonian freak. I am a loser with no great winning streak. A union atheist, perhaps, is too meek to sail up a neo-gnostic creek. Without humanism, none of it matters at all. A growing number of us are already asking, is there anyone else who wishes to play ball? After understanding our complexity, Perhaps computing the universe's creation is the easiest thing of all. So how long will we last if the universe is so staid and vast? How long until we fall? Our lives are short, our span a quick tick times ten. Catastrophe, apocalypse, cataclysm, and judgment day on a solar eclipse dog us, beg us to remind us of our sin. But the cloak of pious hesitance, stumble steps to stumble below the eyes in the dark, can be cast aside. There are other events of heaven and earth, like equinox, like solstice, and the turning of the tide. Perhaps the nights have grown shorter and we approach our longest day. The frosted dog-long winter has crept from the sea, yet we yet retire. Five points on the chalkboard, and we draw a star. The first star, the morning star, is Venus, Phosphorus, Lucifer, and Jesus. It is, the, it is wisdom, the symbol of David and Solomon. The Arthurian legend, it is the five virtues of chivalry, the five wounds of Christ. The star is wood, wire, wood, fire, water, earth, and air. Pythagorean roots gilded with the golden ratio. We represent our senses and connect ourselves to the universe in our past patio. The base ten comprehensions of an amalgam of our maxima of counting digits. 
By st staring upward, the bent mirror pulses this reflection into our gibbons. Three points on the chalkboard create a triangle. The base shape of our Euclidean geometry is a symbol of protection in ancient Germany. Our muse is nine, the base unit of empire, man, woman, child, our fate is three. The sizes most utilitarian, small, medium, and large, correspond to the Holy Trinity. Good things come in threes, bad things come in threes, Pythagoras believed in three. It is a crowd to me. Everyone must have a beginning, middle, and end. How many times must you try and try again if you first do not succeed? Indeed, three. There is a heaven, a hell, and Midgard. Physics is not immune, is not immune with its electron, proton, and neutron. Balance even, even further reigns supreme with gauge balsams, quarks, and leptons. Do not be worried, do not be alarmed. There is nothing magic or special in the observ observation made from a tree. There are five points in this circle and three in this one. Squeak, squeak, squeak. And we eat our jelly bean. What does it mean? It does not matter if it is something unseen, and it's a tough nut to crack, but that's what it is to be a human being. <laughs> sumptive-like and pale, your supper cooked, your little stove aglow, you tired but snug and happy as a child. Then twas turkey in the straw till your lips were nearly raw, and you hurled your bold defiance to the wild. Do you recollect the flashing, lashing pain, the gulf of humid blackness overhead, the lighting making rapiers of the rain? The cattle horns like candles of the dead. You're sitting on your bronco there alone, in your slicker, saddle sore and sick with cold. Do you think the silent herd did not hear the mockingbird or relish silver threads among the gold? Do you recollect the wild Magellan coast, the headwinds and the icy roaring seas, the nights you thought that everything was lost, the days you toiled in water to your knees, the frozen rat lines shrieking in the gale, the hissing steeps and gulfs of livid foam, when you cheered your messmates nine 
with Ben Bolt and Clementine and Dixieland and seeing Nellie home? Let the jammy banjo voice the younger son who waits for his remittance to arrive. I represent the grimy, gritty one who sweats his bones to keep himself alive, who's up against the real thing from his birth, whose heritage is hard and bitter toil. I voice the weary, smeary ones of earth, the helots of the sea and of the soil. I am the Steinway of strange mischief and mischance. I am the Stradivarius of black de blank defeat. In the down world, where the devil leads the dance, I am simply and symbolically meet. I am the irrepressive spirit of mankind. I am the small boy playing knuckle down with death. At the end of all things known, where God's rubbish heap is thrown, I thrill and pivot, triumph at a breath. I am a humble little, little bit of tin and horn. I am a byword, I am a plaything, I am a jest. The virtuoso looks on me with scorn, but there's times when I am better than the best. Ask the stoker and the sailor of the sea, ask the mucker and the hewer of the pine, ask the herder of the plain, ask the gleaner of the grain, there's a lowly, loving kingdom, and it's mine. Thanks, Dan, for the music and the words. Rebecca Pilgrim? Yep. Okay. thoughts and feelings that we like to call pleasure. 
There comes a point in time when one remembers their childhood, when it becomes a thing of the past, something we now may only long for. We must build ourselves a fortress and spend our time foraging for sustenance. But no, when we remember, it becomes our time to run. Because I could not stop for death, he kindly stopped for me. The carriage held but just ourselves and immortality. We slowly drove, he knew no haste, and I had put away my labor and my leisure too for his civility. We passed the school where children played, their lessons scarcely done. We passed the fields of gazing grain, we passed the setting sun. We paused before a house that seemed a stone of the ground. The roof was scarcely visible, the corn was spun around. Since then, tis centuries, but each feels shorter than the day. I first surmised the horses' heads were toward eternity. interesting for the few years I've been here that you can read the paper, then you can 